Good morning, glider pilots. Uh, this is Armin Charbonneau, uh, certified flight instructor at the uh, Soaring Society of Boulder. And uh, today is Thanksgiving Day 2022. Um, it's a cloudy, cold day, not a day for soaring. Uh, so I thought it would be a good day for ground school. Um, and talk about a topic uh, that um, doesn't <coughs> get talked about <coughs> as much as it should, uh, but it's a really important thing that you have to do uh, <coughs> for your glider training, and that is to get your FAA student pilot's license. Now, you don't need a student pilot's license to fly with your instructor. Um, your instructor's license covers the flight, and he or she is pilot in command. So um, that's fine. However, if you want to go solo and get a big smile on your face like uh, this young fellow has, uh, then you have to have an FAA student pilot's license. And what happens all too often is uh, we get training, we get it, you know, we get involved in the training, we get, we learn things, and then a uh, pilot gets to, student pilot gets to the point that he's ready to go solo, and it's like, oh, no, we don't have a license. We got to get your license, and then there's a mad scramble to get the license. So I'd like to see things go a little bit differently. Uh, and what I'm doing now is uh, requiring, uh, if I take on a new student, um, that they apply for the student FAA student pilot's license uh, as soon as we get started. Uh, note, uh, of course, that uh, if you already have an FAA pilot's license for uh, private commercial ATP, uh, you don't need to have a, a uh, student pilot's license. Uh, you, so if you're in that boat, if you're a transition pilot, you can stop watching this uh, this video and skip to something else. Um, one of my other videos, that is, uh, if, especially if you're going to be one of my students, uh, you must have an FAA pilot's license before you can solo any aircraft. Uh, you apply through the FAA's website, uh, Affectionately called IACRA or I A C R A uh, dot F A A dot gov. And uh, it's a government website. And <laughs> not surprisingly, it's cumbersome. Uh, this isn't going to work like some slick um, uh, Google website or something. This is uh, going to be uh, a little harder to use. Uh, the security is rigorous and the passwords and all kinds of stuff. They make sure you got a password you can't possibly remember, uh, things like that. Um, and uh, I guess it has to be that way. Uh, the FAA uh, needs to keep control of who is flying air or know who is flying aircraft. Uh, and uh, they have a tough job and, and certainly would get uh, abused if their security was not good. So uh, the good news on that, however, is the FAA's help desk is excellent. They're really good. They're very helpful. Uh, when they're open, of course, it's uh, you can't call them at three in the morning or something. Um, but um, if they're at their if they're open and at their and at the help desk is uh, very good. So uh, if you have problems, uh, don't hesitate to use them. Uh, the FAA requires a complete set of data of who the pilots are. Who's up? They want to know who's flying aircraft. This became um, a real big issue after 9-11. And for some of you younger folks, um, you may not remember uh, exactly how things went down uh, in 2001. But uh, uh, it was bad. And uh, there were pilots, student pilots, who showed up at a... Uh, training facility in Florida. They wanted to learn how to fly, but they weren't interested in learning how to land. Um, 
that should have sent off a lot of bells and whistles. And I think for some people it did, but it didn't get the attention it, it should have. Um, and uh, so now, uh, if that were to happen again, it would get it would get attention. Um, so you know, to keep that data uh, up to date, um, it, once you have a pilot's license, if you move, you have to notify the FAA within 30 days. You have 30 days to keep your correct uh, address on there. Uh, you also, um, when you apply for a license. Or rating, you have to disclose drug and D DWI convictions. Um, I don't know what they do if you did, if, if you have that. I hope I never find out. Uh, recommending instructor, uh, you need to show your uh, flight instructor. Or your recommending your flight instructor is your recommending recommending instructor. Uh, you have to show them either a state driver's license, passport. I think there's some other types of IDs they accept. I'm not sure what they are. Um, I've never had uh, to uh, get a license for any, but recommend a license for anyone who didn't have a driver's license or passport. Uh, the recommending instructor needs to give you the pilot's bill of rights and the airman certificate and or rating application. Um, so you have to see those. Here's a screenshot of what the IACRA um, web page looks like. When you get started, uh, just you just start with register. I've got it kind of highlighted here. Then you go on and you say you're an applicant. And then you have to fill out this form. There's, I think there's others. I had to stop here because I would have had to put in phony baloney information to get past it. So I just stopped here. But you can. You, you know, it's self-explanatory. You go through the uh, through the pages. Okay, now once you register and and then fill out the form on IACRA for student license, and a common error is to put in that you look that you're that you want a private license because that's what most, that's what you're working towards, but that's not where you are yet. So first you have to get the private license. Uh, then later, once your training is complete, you'll apply for the, for the private license. But um, anyway, so apply for the student license. IACRA will give you an FTN, which stands for FAA tracking number. Um, and you will have that FAA tracking number uh, for the rest of your aviation career. Um, it, it will always be the same one. And the FTN will start with a, a letter and followed by seven numbers. Uh, so after you register on IACRA uh, <laughs> and request a uh, student pilot's license, you get the FTN, give that number, that FTN, to your recommending instructor. Now the rest of the process uh, involves some cyber ping pong. Uh, so it's best accomplished with a student and instructor on two different communicate two different computers um, in communication through Zoom or phone, or you know, even in the same room if you have two portable computers be on the same Wi-Fi and, um, and and then just keep your logins because the logins are so tough on IACRA. Uh, uh, I have to do it on my own computer where it's, the computer has the IACRA code memorized. Uh, there's no way I could remember it. Um, so your recommending instructor will log into their IACRA account, enter your FTN. They, the recommending instructor will then need to see your driver's license passport uh, or other ID to fill out the forms. Uh, the recommending instructor will have to attest to a few things. Uh, including your English proficiency. Uh, for those of you who do not speak fluent English or English to a certain standard that's that's set by the FAA, uh, you have to do that. You have to get to that level of English proficiency uh, to get a license. Um, I, I, I feel 
I feel for you if your English proficiency is not good. If you grew up in a, in a country that didn't speak English, um, it's going to be harder. Uh, but the only way aviation around the world can stay safe, safe is if all the uh, controllers and pilots uh, are all speaking the same language. We, we can't have a Tower of Babylon, so to speak, um, at airports with uh, both, both with pilots not understanding what each other says. Um, your recommended instructor will click the appropriate box. And now the ping pong goes back to you. Now it's your turn. Uh, here's, a, here's a quick shot of the pilot's Bill of Rights. Uh, you can read that at your leisure. Uh, and then here's a copy of the Airman Certificate and or rating application. Uh, and uh, for those of you who like reading legal uh, documents, you'll enjoy this one. Uh, and if you're not happy with it uh, and you want to change it, uh, good luck. <laughs> I think you have to accept it the way it is or uh, decide that you're not going to be a, you're not going to, not going to be a pilot. Uh, Okay, so now you need to log back in. Now the, the cyber ball is back in your court, uh, and you need to log back in IACRA, click the appropriate boxes, review your 8710 form. Uh, your 8710 form will be used every time you get a rating. So you'll see it again uh, after you get done your training and you want to get a private rating or if you want to add it. I don't know, helicopter rating to your license or whatever, whatever. Every rating here, you're going to do an 8710. Uh, so your first one is going to be largely blank because you don't have any hours to report. You don't have any ratings to report. Um, and then you'll sign it with a click, uh, click a uh, click signing, uh, and then tell your recommended instructor you signed your application. Uh, your recommended instructor logs back in to IACRA, enters that FTN reviews everything and signs via a click uh, your application. Now, once that's done, then uh, the application goes to the FAA for review and there will be a time lag before your license gets approved. Um, formally, uh, we could print out a paper license in 48 hours. Uh, but that seems to be longer nowadays. Uh, the last one I did was this month in November, uh, and the website indicated it needed five days to get a credible license. Um, you know, it takes a month or so, uh, maybe two months, to get your plastic license in the mail. But you can, uh, you can, you, you ha once that five days or whatever it is, uh, that you can log on to IACRA and print out. Uh, a, a license. You, you've got the student license, and um, the, the plastic one will arrive when it arrives, but um, you'll need that. So, because of the time lags, because of the uh, somewhat difficulty in, in uh, working through IACRA and getting your, your license, um, I make my students now, uh, I now. <laughs> make my students uh, apply for the license as soon as we agree that uh, we're going to do the flight training. So apply for your student license as soon as your instructor agrees to train for you to get ahead of that curve. All right, so the quiz. And uh, every every good ground school has a quiz. Uh, so uh, get, a, get a piece of paper, put this uh, video on pause if you need to, but get a a piece of paper and a, and a pen or a crayon or something, and uh, so you can write down one, two, three, four, five, and then um, write down an answer. The answers to these quizzes are usually one to you know three or four words. If you need to write, you know, a paragraph, uh, you, you don't know the answer. Uh, so, when's the best time to apply for a student license? Uh, what FAA website do you use to apply for a license or rating? Write that down. What documents do you need to show your recommending instructor? Write that down. 
what documents do you need to review? And uh, so write that down. And can you solo an aircraft after application, but before the issuance of the license of your of the actual of the either a print out or whatever license? Give you a little time. Put it on pause if you need to. And here's the answers. Best time to get apply for your student pilot's license is as soon as you begin your flight training. Uh, what FAA website do you use? iacra.faa.gov. I think if you just put IACRA into uh, Google or whatever, it will come right up. What passports do you need to show your recommending instructor? You need to show them passport, driver's license. Um, there may be some other documents the FAA will accept, but uh, passport, driver's license is, is a certain one. Uh, two that are that work easily. Uh, what documents do you need to review? You need to be given the pilot's bill of rights and the airman certificate and or rating application. Can you solo an aircraft after application but before actual receiving the license? No. So uh, that concludes this brief overview on how to get your pilot's license. Uh, so do not delay in, in applying for your private license, and uh, we will see you at the field.